Welcome to part 26. In this part, I'm going to add a couple of things to the armature, and then I'm going to create a path constraint. Or it's not really path constraint, it's a follow a path where the walk cycle actually walks along the ground and looks like it's walking on the ground rather than just like a moving treadmill, as, as one person described it. So, Without further ado, I will get in there and do that. First thing I want to do is something I should have done earlier when I was creating the rig itself. Um, uh, when, when the hips rotate, they don't typically rotate at the bottom there. This, this is some knowledge I learned from the Big Buck Bunny uh, tutorial DVD. Um, so i got to credit uh, Mr. Nathan Vegdahl for that information. Um, it's a quick easy fix though. Um, what you gotta do is just go in there and grab that hip bone and I want to duplicate it and I'm going to Alt S fatten it up a little bit so I can see it a little better and let's break out my transform properties just hit hit your N key and that'll pop up. Go ahead and name that hip control controller. There we go. Okay now, go ahead and close that back out, don't need it anymore. I want to rotate it 180 degrees. So now, when I go back to edit mode, its pivot point is at the top rather than the bottom. And I want to grab my uh, the original hip bone, and I'm going to parent it to that new, new one, but I want to keep the offset. So now, I'm going to rotate that if, if everything was copacetic, which we're in the middle of that walk uh, um, walk cycle that I made in, in part 25. And let me go ahead and start fixing that up. I don't want... This is the hips that I rotated and, and animated before. Um, I don't want those to move now that I have this new controller. So I'm just going to grab that right here in the list and just hit delete and it's going to erase it. And so now it doesn't have any keyframes anymore. Okay, so now I just I want to grab the controller and, and you can see it's rotating a little more realistically. Especially if you're animating a female, which we're obviously not here, but uh, you know the nice sensual walk that they shake their hips when they walk. Um, okay, so that's that. One thing to help with some of that realism though is remember we set this uh, head bone to a hinge and so any anytime you move anything else the head stays straight um, I'm gonna go ahead and we did it to the chest I'm gonna go ahead and do it to the spine as well so now when I move the hips it's just the hips that move so you, know, you can dance or do whatever so nice handy little feature and just to avoid confusion, I'm going to go ahead and grab that original hip bone. I'm going to move it and put it on the same layers that we have those fingers on. Just that one right there, the second one. Okay, so now that I've done that, I need to go back in and modify this new hip thing to match up with the, mold, with the walk. So I'll just drag that down. And... Okay, that looks good. We'll go ahead and just rotate a little bit. He's going to shake his hips just a little bit as he's walking. And I'm not going to animate every five frames like I did on the the rest of the... You know, just to save some confusion. Oh, yeah. Got to go back to NLA Editor. Grab this. And remember, we scaled it down to 75%. That... When you're editing the animation, it's a good idea to go ahead and put it back to 100%, 1.0. Excuse me. Uh, okay, now I can go back into the editor and grab everything and move it to where it's on a good even number. And what the heck, we can go ahead and snap to the nearest frame just to make sure things are still lining up. Okay, so... I don't want to. Uh, let's do every every two. Just raise it up. Just go ahead and move it over a little bit as he's raising that leg. There we 
go. And now, you know what? I think I'm going to redo the spine as well. Sorry for having to backtrack and do all this stuff. I had a pretty decent walk cycle already, but you can always do something better. Well, not always, but usually. Okay, I'm rotate that a little bit more. And I think 25 is about the halfway mark. So he's probably going to straighten it back down. Maybe not quite so rotated on that one. That's a little more natural, don't you think? Kind of a lot more subtle. And now we will grab these guys and actually I don't want to duplicate them. I want to do the old copy and paste opposite copy. And if you see what I did, uh, if you want to just move move your bar without having to resize your window, just uh, use your middle mouse button if you have one. Just click it and drag it there. Okay, so I copied that pose. I'm going to go... I guess on this one and paste the opposite. Yeah, yeah that looks about right. And grab this guy, copy, go here, paste the opposite. And finally, let's move that so I can copy it. Go ahead and move it back where it was. Go to the very end, paste the opposite. Or paste uh, normal, I guess. Okay, so let's turn off the subsurf view so we can see a little bit smoother playback. That's a little, I don't know if it's better, but he's got a definite a little bit of a hip swing now that's kind of matching his stride. So, that little hip bone is a nice handy little thing to, to use. Okay, now, in order to have him walk along a path, it's a good idea to add what is called a uh, stride bone and I'm going to add that in just go in here underneath him is good so then you can match it up with his feet just add a new bone and let's see where it put it almost right in the middle that's almost where I need to go but I need to go it doesn't have, have to be right in the middle it just helps you visualize things a little better when it is in the middle okay so grab it and just drag it straight down you can hold down control and it'll kind of pop it to a set vert, uh, not vertex, but uh, angle, I guess you could say. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag it out along the y axis. There we go. And let's go ahead, open up our transform properties, name this stride. Okay. Now, what we have to do with this stride bone is. We have to match it up with with the movement of the feet. So I'm going to actually I'm going to go go into edit mode. I'm going to drag it up a little bit to where it's more like right there, like he's walking on it. And I'm going to start it off on the very edge of his heel on his left foot. Go ahead and grab that over. There we go. And then kind of just match it up along with his foot's motion each. Oh yeah, I'm undoing the hips there on, on accident, right? Okay, so just drag it to the end of the heel. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. And now you, you can't do the copy and paste opposite on a stride bone. You have to have to s sit through the whole process. Oops. So about at this step, I can go ahead and switch over and start aligning it with the other foot. So to do that, I want to go ahead and make it a little longer so I can align it up with the toe as it comes down. Bam, right there, good. 
Actually, let's move it back just a little bit some more. There we go. Next, keep it lined up with the toe of the right foot. There we go. And okay, this this problem you might notice from time to time. It's like I want to move it here to right there, but boom, it keeps popping back into place. I don't know why. Well, I'll tell you why. Because under NLA Editor, we still have this little icon selected. And what that means is it's showing our NLA Editor animation rather than, if you click on it, you see the little guy running. That means it's the Action Editor. So now we're looking at what it should look like. So now if you look, he's walking looks like he's walking on that stride bone and his feet are pushing it along so it doesn't like just move smoothly under him it follows his feet okay so now we can turn the the uh, the NLA editor icon back on there and you can see it loops along under his feet okay groovy now go into top view and I'm going to turn off all those lights and everything. So hold down shift and click on that layer. And I want to just spacebar in anywhere outside here. And I'm going to add a curve. And it's going to be a path. And I stuck it right there where the 3D cursor was, which is fine. And now I'm going to go into it. And you can see little arrows pointing. That's the direction that uh, he's going to be walking on it when we get it situated where we need to put it. Okay, so now, just grab all those. I guess I'm in edit mode. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Just scale that up to where he can walk on it. Now let's throw a curve in there so we can kind of see his change in direction as he was walking on it. And you know what, maybe, maybe it's got a little hill on it. So he's going to be walking to the side and upwards a little bit. Okay, now we grab our position. Oh, that's one thing I need to do in here also is parent that stride bone to our main bone. Keep the offset. Okay, now position him. Actually, turn off the keyframes because we don't need to have a keyframe on there. We just need to position it over here. Okay, and let's put it right there. Actually, one thing to do, perfect alignment, shift S, Cursor to selection, okay. Grab that, shift S, selection to cursor. Boom, now it's right there on the start of that line. Okay, now the magic starts happening. Blender is full of magic, I love it. So grab that, shift, grab the, uh, the path, control P, and we want to follow that path. And he's acting up a little bit. I was having this problem earlier when I was kind of just messing with stuff. Just like to have to drag him right back where it was. Oh, perhaps I do need a keyframe. Yeah. Okay. You can kind of see his body rotating to follow that curve. He's hovering above it a little ways because I thought I lined it up, but I guess you have to do it with the keyframes turned on. So let's go ahead and uh, try that Shift D selection to cursor. There we go. Now then, side view so we can kind of see him going up and down the hill. There we go. All right. If you notice, he kind of takes a couple of seconds to get started, and then he goes, and then he kind of a couple of seconds to slow down. That's uh, the fall off of his uh, of his IPO curves. So to fix that, just go into IPO Curve Editor, and we want to select our path, and then right down here. Let's see what we got here. Okay, where it says Object, go up and select Path, and you can see that curve. That's that's it's like a Bezier curve. It likes to smooth the beginning and end. I don't want it smooth. I want it to be 
upset because he's starting and he's walking. He's, he's not even starting walking. He's already walking at this point. So let's go tab, select all of those, and if you push E on your keyboard, it'll bring up IPO extend mode, and you want constant. And then if you push T, it'll bring the IPO type, and we want linear. So now it's straightened it out. So now, drag that back, you can see he starts the same speed as he's walking the whole time. So problem is, he's still walking after he finishes. That's because the IPO curve is automatically set to only go to 100. So what we need to do is back in edit mode again, grab that final one right here, and go ahead and drag it. If you push X, it'll only drag it on the X axis. That's what you want. And drag it over to, let's see, I guess our scene is 150 frames long. So drag it to about 150. So now it takes him the whole 150 frames to walk on that cycle. Okay, so it looks decent, but we can make it look better with that stride bone that we, we stuck on there. And what you do now is just hit stride path. It's like, whoa, it's going crazy now. That's because we have to tell him what stride bone is. And since we named it stride, we just type in stride. And we usually have to go to the Y axis. And now you can see that he, it looks like he is walking on that path. And you can change the path up, just grab it. Have a bit of a curve there at the bottom. For some reason, he's walking kind of sideways on what? Okay, it has to be Y. Perhaps it's something to do with the way I attached it. Rotating. I don't know. But that's how you apply. <laughs> I got the, the keyframe thing set so it like added keyframes to it. I don't want that. Delete that. I oh, guess I gotta pause it first. Now delete. Delete. No, it's not letting me delete. Curve. Delete. Yes. Delete. Yes. I guess it has to be more in the view to be able to delete it. Hmm. Perhaps the location of the vertices inside that path. Hmm. Quarter rotation on that? No, nothing. If we rotate that now. Nothing. Huh. That's odd. I'll have to look into that. But anyways, you get the idea. Walking along that path. Okay. Um, okay, I guess that's going to be it for part 26. Um, I guess I'll do another part 27 and show you a little bit of uh, how to do lip syncing with this new facial rig that we have. And, uh, and we'll see what happens after that. Okay, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in part 27.